ยกตัวตอกาตัวเจ้าฟ้าตอลองบาปอเสียเจ็บเอาเสียตัวตาเต้งตัวไทยเต้งวันรุ่นนี้ยังบันดีใจเย็นรู้เสียให้เสียกู
ye to shop shu what you wanna put to you sang ya Christine Christina ni ya to office nya ho office of community safety la ya ilu cha u ho lu nya ho ru jung Minneapolis ya office of community safety Christina thi ku u ya u ho lu nya ru jung Minneapolis chi ta lin da u chong tie zai to to mo ni ao mi to ro shu what you wanna tie ni ji ko de me cha ni shara ya ni chi to ke no shu what you wanna WXK ku ko program no ilu ลีตือทะเทินูเตอร์สเตย์เทียนูเตอร์สเตย์ที่เป็นอีลูลีตือตัวโชว์ก็จะนั่งทอออดแต่งตาชูมุนสเปตตัวโชว์นูน้อยย
He's a Harvard professor and he did research on communities such as Minneapolis. And so the report really recommends that the city create a community safety ecosystem and that that ecosystem is both in collaboration with community and government to create services that focus on prevention, response and restoration. And so this report has really served as a launching point for us as we try to explore what does community safety look like what is this ecosystem of community safety and then how are we as a department and implementing that? And so there's three things that we're really working on right now. And one is this Lake Street Community Safety Center. So that is a temporary site that's gonna open up later this summer. It's gonna service those individuals that live, work and visit the East Lake Street corridor from 35W to Hiawatha. There'll be a small police presence and then we'll have some social services there. And then the larger community safety center that we're building is the South Minneapolis Community Safety Center. So this is the permanent site. It's gonna open uh, phase one of quarter one, 2025. And so that one is located at 2633 Minnehaha Avenue. And so when that site opens uh, to align with Dr. Oftali's report, we wanna make sure that we have services in each category. So that prevention, response and restoration. Um, this site is also gonna be house of the new third precinct police. Um, department. And so this safety community center is really going to help those individuals that live, work, and visit the southeast portion of Minneapolis. Um, it is going to have some social services and other building uses and resources. And so we've been out in community to get feedback on all of the above. And I'll kind of get to that later. But thank you for asking me that question. เนี่ยเดี๋ยวเฮาว่าชาวเอ่อ <laughs> ตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัว
อ่าเซฟตี้เซ็นเตอร์เทียไปยังมอนิโยโรตอไปบาเทจิเชติไปยังคีโจเลยยงอ่าThank you so much, Christina. Help us understand, you mentioned Office of Community Safety. Help us understand what, what does that mean um, and how does that benefit our community? Please share that with us. Office of Community Safety. Yeah, thank you, Michael, for that question. That is a great question. Uh, so the Office of Community Safety is new, relatively new, I should say. So we opened up in fall of 2022 uh, under the new government structure in Minneapolis. And Commissioner Todrick Barnett, uh, who oversees uh, this office, he coordinates the work of five safety departments. And so this includes police, 911, emergency management, fire department, and neighborhood safety. And the Office of Community Safety does have mission, vision, and values, excuse me. And the department's uh, mission is, uh, Minneapolis Office of Community Safety, excuse me, is to provide a coordinated, comprehensive, and equitable safety services to all residents and visitors. And then our vision is uh, a place that a city where all people feel safe, social disparities are eliminated, and all residents can access opportunities and resources. And then finally, we do have values uh, that we focus on, which is accountability, equity, inclusion and belonging, community engagement, collaboration, and innovation. And as a department, we've also defined what community safety is, recognizing that that means something different to everybody and that it's different from public safety. And so community safety is work where community members and local governments that allow all people in Minneapolis to be safe and feel safe. And so this includes feeling safe from violence and the root causes of violence. So it's not just looking at like criminal activity, but maybe some of those underlying things that might revolve around safety. So we might talk about poverty. There might be things like post-traumatic stress disorder. It's not necessarily directly linked to just criminal activity. เวลาที่เราชอบไมโครก็เราลุ้นกันอย่างนี้ให้เรารู้ถึงเจ๊งเห็นเทียเรามองตรงนี้เราพี่ก็คิดว่าโครงการนั้นฝ่าที่จะเ
Thank you. Thank you so much, Christine. Uh, Christina on that. What John Tao Christine got gone. Christina got John Yitzikatim Chaka Tao. Um help us understand, Christina, what is a community safety center? What does that mean? Um, and what 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 services inside and what can people expect when they walk into um, this community safety center? Um New community safety center on the yard that she didn't more that she hold a tonic ticket and child to mushi, la to move got a hole. No, how you bought that she did love you more to keep back to your whole jumping yard. A talk about here, talk here on the ticket and job, Bishop. Yeah, thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. So, this is a question that I get asked all the time What is a community safety center? And so, I can tell you that it is a center that will have the response, restoration, and from prevention measures in it, like I mentioned earlier about Dr. Oftali's report. So the response really is encompassed by MPD, and then we're looking at the prevention and restoration services um, that will be included in the building. Uh, community Safety Center is also a physical structure. It's a location that's accessible to the public, and it really is a collaboration between government and community-based organizations where the people in Minneapolis can really come together in an effort to break down any barriers. What I will tell you it's not, is it's not a city hall, it's not a standalone police station, it's not a substation, nor is it a recreation center. So we're really trying to make the distinction between just having these standalone facilities where people are really going from one building to the next and hoping to have all types of services encompassed into one building. And so you had asked, what can they expect when they walk in? And while we don't have anything final uh, to put out there because we're still doing community feedback sessions, and trying to figure out what those services are. What we're hoping is having this welcome atmosphere that's really intuitive, that people are greeted by members of city staff to help them navigate the building and get them to the services and resources that they are desiring when they enter it. So thank you for asking me. Uh, ทำมั่วเตียเต็มหนึ่งเลยเตียเตียสิชิงตัวชิชิละมุนจอดจอดเตียสักเก็บไปอยู่อ่ะเยอะเตียตัวตู้จอดเต็มหนึ่งแล้
Yeah, thank you for that, Michael. I appreciate it. So to answer your first question about why are we engaging right now? So I wanna just start out by saying that we are looking for new ways to do engagement and really talking to those people that really haven't been reached before. So we are doing all sorts of events. Uh, we've done community meetings with specific groups. We have an online public meeting coming up May 22nd. We also have a survey that was mailed out to residents and businesses in the Southeast uh, Minneapolis area to really get their feedback about what services and resources they want. And we've also done some walking engagements along Franklin Avenue and um, Lake Street, uh, just to figure out what is the feedback from the community and what do they wanna see in these centers? Because the city, we have not decided what is gonna go into these centers. We really wanna hear from the community. So the city really does need the public's help in deciding what services will go there. And that's why we're trying all these different means and modes of communicating with people. So as I mentioned, we've had community meetings, we have some online things coming up and we realize that not everybody can attend everything or maybe the event that they wanna attend is something that's not accessible to them uh, because they might have a prior engagement. So we really are trying to reach as many people as we can. Um, and so, as I mentioned, we are working with local government organizations to talk to specific communities. And this is us coming out into their community so that people feel comfortable and that we can have events in their home language. Um, and we also are continuing to have conversations with businesses groups. Uh, like we have one coming up this Saturday with the Latino business community, clergy, and then other community members. We just wanna make sure that we really are capturing all voices and especially those voices that are most impacted by the criminal justice and social justice systems. And really just highlighting that the city can't do this work alone. This really is in community and collaboration with those that are actually gonna use these spaces. So thank you. โอลีนอเทียวโอกะลาลุนงกะเทียไมโกไฮซานอลุนจงมะเนียวเปสโนยีวีไฮเทียปิทิเรียวมอยอตงกาลายะเตสาตอสะเกกงเตลาลาลิ
Chenyo Jane Minneapolis Office of Community Safety, the Office of Community Safety New Minneapolis Community Safety Center Christine, welcome back to WXK1590 AM uh, Mung Radio. I have a next question for you is how can people provide their feedback, weigh in on this safety center? Um, are there other ways that people can weigh in who don't speak the language, who only know Hmong? Help us understand. Um, Christina, only yeah, thank you, Michael, for having me back. I appreciate it. Um, so we do have a series of events posted on our website um, that provide opportunities for people to have conversations uh, with many parts of our community as possible. And so that's focusing on um, both diverse ethnic and racial groups, youth, elders. So we've talked to a variety of people so far. And while we're not done speaking to people, we are having two other maybe larger events. I shouldn't even say larger events. So I did just mention that we do have a survey that's going out. It's live now on our website. It's open until May 24th, so people can go on there. It is translated in uh, Hmong, Spanish, Somali, Oromo, and obviously in English. And uh, people can utilize uh, the language services on the website, um, but it is all translated. 
Um, so they have until May 24th to tell us kind of what their feelings are about community safety services and resources and what should be in the South Minneapolis uh, facility. There is a 90 second video that will prompt people uh, to watch before they do fill out the survey. We also have uh, the transcript from the video posted in all of the languages too. And then, as I mentioned before the break, we do have a, another event on May 22nd. And so everyone is open to coming. It is a Zoom meeting. It's gonna be held in the evening. Um, so that might be easier for people to attend. And we ask that people just let us know by signing up so that we can plan for enough facilitators and breakout rooms and make sure that we have all the city staff available to help out. Um, in terms of like asking questions um, or providing additional feedback, I'm happy to provide my information for anybody to reach out to me. Uh, I have been doing this work for a few months, so I'm happy to engage with anyone and everyone that wants to talk about it. So thank you. ลีนาเทียวชาวกาจากาตระมุเซกุลามูจาโฮนาเทียไฮจากะปองไอเทียไทซนาคานอเกลูเชชาเทียจะเกชาชัวเกจอนเชยตอลูเชลูเชานอน
people wanted to talk about safety. So this could have been having more street lights. This could be around having more of a police presence. It just varied. Uh, and then there was a big theme about trauma, healing and accountability. And this is on part of the city and then having some policies out there about what is the city doing around community safety and then offering workshops. And so to bring you up to speed, so Director Harrington and I have been out in the community for the past five weeks. And so we've been meeting with people to talk about what are those social services and what are those other building uses and resources that people wanna see. And so there are about 11 social service items that we've been uh, engaging with community on and having them help us prioritize. And what those are is addiction services, affordable housing, mental health, economic support, education support, employment support, food security, harm reduction, unsheltered homeless resources, mentoring, and youth. And part of these conversations that we've been having with people have been, what does this support mean to you? And so when we talk about like economic support, what does that mean? Because the city may have a different idea of what the community says. And so some people have mentioned, um, we want more investment in the community. Or when we talk about employment support, people want help finding jobs. They want help doing interview prep. They want help writing a resume. So those things we are making notes of and trying to find out how we can kind of get those community partners in line with us once we have final decisions about what's going into the community safety center. And so then, as I mentioned a few seconds ago, we're talking about like, what are other building uses and resources that we can have in the South Minneapolis Community Safety Center because it is huge. So we do have some space to work with that's open for us. And so some of the things that we've been asking people about if they want in there is like art. Some people have mentioned that they want culturally specific art. I know that there's schools close to 2633 Minnehaha. People have talked about having artwork from the school's presence. People have talked about charging stations. So this is including like phone chargers or having electric vehicle chargers. People have talked about a quiet resting space. And this question, when people bring it up, I do ask like, what does that mean? Because a quiet resting space could be a room with cots in it. It could just be like a break room. And so the feedback on that has really varied from having like a solo room where people can sleep to having just recliners, just some chairs, just a place where people can really relax. Uh, we've also asked people about their input for space for supervised parental visits, a space to do marketplace exchanges or parental exchanges, so that neither one of those things are like in an alley or a vacant parking lot, just to have some safety around that. People have asked about medical services, office spaces for neighborhood safety groups, a space for community meals. People have talked a lot about wanting uh, people to come together and having kind of a neutral area to come together. Um, having a space for donations, and that varied from having like hygiene kits to food to clothing, um, giving out opioid overdose medication, having a resource hub, having regular presentations for the community, also a homework hub. People have talked about having that as a resource, a medical disposal box, gun buyback, having technology services here, free legal advice. Uh, excuse me, not free legal advice, free office space for small businesses, sorry, but also having legal services in this area. And then, as I mentioned, my previous job was with appeal hearings. So having people have opportunity to appear for appeal hearings without having to come downtown. And then the last thing was this toy tool library. And so, um, as I mentioned, we started to, to do engagement uh, walking the streets of Franklin Avenue and Lake Street. And so some of the top building uses that came up for that area specifically was to offer medical services and space for community meals, space for donations. Uh, people there said they wanted us to provide overdose um, opioid medication and then child care for people using the site. And then kind of their top services uh, were around uh, drug and alcohol addiction services, affordable housing, mental health, employment services, and then homeless resources. I will mention that we did do uh, engagements on Franklin Avenue, and most people really chimed in about having those substance use services, affordable housing, mental health, employment services, and homeless resources. We also did an event at senior, excuse me, at South High School, because we really wanted to hear feedback from the youth. We also attended the city's youth day at City Hall, and we got some great feedback from all of the high school students that attended. And so while we were at South High, we did engage in an interactive activity. We did a presentation. 
And we really focus the conversation on and hearing from the youth and having the youth help us really decide what services should go in here. And so they came up with the top six and what they wanted to see in the South Minneapolis Community Safety Center specifically was services around affordable housing, um, education support, uh, employment support, food security, mental health, and homeless resources. And then they also felt that similar services should be at Lake Street, but we should really have heightened priorities around homeless resources and substance use disorder services. And so some events have uh, prioritized using community safety centers for cultural practices or community gatherings. As I mentioned about art, some people have mentioned having culturally specific art in the space and other request specific services to youth. And so that has varied from people have asked for like a basketball court. People have talked about just having a place where youth can hang out that's maybe not on school facility or they're not going home. And many people want more recreational spaces to get exercise. Um, and we recognize that there are spaces close to 26 in Minnehaha um, that have those facilities. And so as I mentioned at the start of this, we really don't wanna recreate duplicate, we don't really want to create a rec center and that uh, we wanna be thoughtful and mindful of duplicating services while also listening to the community. ไอ้ไฮอ่ะยอยอีขะเดนหนูอ่ะไปเตตะวันเดเฮงจอมเมเทอร์เรนเทลเลเทียจีอันทีท่าเราเนาะปิงตะละมูนจอดเยลาไม
ละมอฮาลินเตอร์กุอิตเตเนงละกุทาซาลาไฮเตียเอ่อกอเทเชปุมอตยาวอเชเซนชับละมาละกุสาเตียละกุสากะมอเซเกปาจอเจเซเกช
เอ่อจะมีรีแกดเดอริงส์ละยะอีเวนต์ละยะจะว่าคงใช่ว่าเสร็จตัวอยู่โอเคเอ่อจะนึกยอดที่ทัชเชอร์อีเตตาที่ท
Saturday Regional Library E.B.E.G. Lowry Avenue North. Payshitan, Yaro Hong or Suji, a got two or Tauji, perhaps Tuchitan, Laka Hong Sotomakula, Yajon Tishi Saka, Kato Kong, Pay, Tauji, Nayakamo, Kanyalum to Minneapolis, come up with Tinaho, Lototo, Ka, Wahol in Yaho, Layakamu Yaj, Lujon, a Lundum Minneapolis, Pokato Kong, Peshera, a Tushitat, Yuam, um, I knew more ballamy pissing, Jean Yarana. She told in the South Minneapolis Limo for public listening sessions. Got told, thank God she found no Thursday. Luanti or Yah, no, no, I don't think she found that. A feeling that only your tea pits of pay more like a pair for something to honor, lost South Dolly Pashinoi, or children in your own or tea, take a dinner charts, all in so do. A nature piece of them to a WIXK, no, Ula Mutha. Here more than Luchata Hole, Lunar Minneapolis, Nora Beta, Zalu, Community Safety Center, Yaro South Minneapolis, Yanachi, teach that in the Moja Luchata Dome, Pakasha and Chicken, a Hanjong, Columbe, who are my Guya Singa, Sotong the Doya, Chow E. O, Pay Osha, or Ye Pisum, Chow E. O, Pay Osha, or Ye Pisum, who are to show you, become home blow, Yala, I mean, take around, Yaroho, Kulusun, Gan Chow, who are neighborhood community relations department, Talkasha and Chicken, a Hanjong, Shinji. Thank <laughs> you.